Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen uh, This is um, uh, our class on William Wordsworth's The Solitary Reaper The Solitary Reaper uh, This is considered one of William Wordsworth's most famous poems that introduces and exemplifies his philosophy of writing poetry because he has got a, uh, his own personal philosophy his own theory that he wrote in the preface to the lyrical ballads. Anyway, uh, let's go into the poem, read the poem, and then goes, go deeper into the meanings of the poem. The poem is simple in, in, on the level of words, meanings, and so on. Let's start. Behold her single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself, stop here or gently pass. Alone she cuts the, and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. Oh, listen for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound. No nightingale did ever chaunt more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady haunt among Arabian sands. A voice, a voice so thrilling, near was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrides. Uh, in the first stanza, the speaker opens the, uh, the, the first stanza with uh, sort of like instructions or commands. Behold her, look at her. What is to behold? Behold is to look with wonder. It's not like look at her. Speaker is asking somebody to behold someone else, to behold a female. Behold her, single in the field. She's alone in the field. It's not an open natural grass, it's not a pasture, it's a field, human-made field. Field of what? F a football field, for example? No, it's not a football field. It's a, a, a plantation field. It's a plantation field. Behold her with admiration. Most of William uh, Wordsworth's poems, the speaker is the speaker is the self-same poet. In these poems we read by William Wordsworth, in most of these poems we can see, we can it's easy to figure out that the speaker in the poem is the poet. Because the poet is in fact is in fact reflecting to us, is reporting to us. The poem is just a report he has written to summarize his experience to uh, explain his experience to open a vent to his experience. Behold her. The speaker is asking someone to hold, to behold someone. Unduru'i or unduru ilayha. Single, alone. No, the theme of loneliness still available over here. Are you, can you see that? Loneliness. Single. Unduru ilayha. Luahdiha, single, when? In the field. What what is the field? Luahdiha fin. Fi al haql. Haql zanai tama. Yon solitary highland lass. That yon means that yon here means that solitary highland lass. He's talking about that lady he ran into the speaker as i told you william wordsworth was a roamer was a walker of europe he used to roam across europe he loved to be away from human civilization and just to uh, to mix up with nature كان يحب ماذا ان يبتعد عن كل مراكز الحضاره المدنيه الانسانيه لكي يختلط ماذا يختلط بالطبيعة. طبعا هذا في أول أيام 
in his young age in his young age ففي احدى رحلاته في سكوتلندا in Scotland in one of his journeys in Scotland he was walking up a hill or a valley or let's say a hill and all of most of Scotland Scotland hills are green Scotland is a very beautiful place by the way so the speaker here is walking with his sister the speaker the poet William Wordsworth is walking with his sister Dorothy her name is Dorothy Wordsworth his name is William Wordsworth and his sister is Dorothy Wordsworth now he's talking to her behold her look at her who's her he is talking about a solitary reaper this brings us back to the topic to the topic of this the title sorry the title of this poem what is it the solitary reaper what does solitary mean solitary means lonely reaper reaper is a farmer who reaps the crops is a farmer who reaps the crops who collects the crops who harvests the crops who is with her nobody she is alone that's lonely solitary منعزل منعزل شخص منعزل وزي ما قلنا لكم William Wordsworth would rather be attracted to anything alone or solitary he doesn't, he doesn't like he didn't like crowds he didn't like to be mingled with crowds crowds of people yeah. he likes lonely people lonely stuff lonely objects lonely animals lonely things anything lonely for him is an inspiration all right anything lonely is considered a poetic pro project it's a it's a project for writing a poem it's a subject to write a poem so William Wordsworth as he as many critics would say would rather to sacrifice the forest for a flower he would not look at the beautiful crowded bushes of the forest no he would look down at a single flower or that is single out from the other uh, stuff of uh, or let's say beautiful aspects of the nature so he would focus writing about something lonely or he would go and do talk about his lonely life so loneliness is a, an original theme in most of William Wordsworth poems in here he asks the speaker or the speaker is talking either to a uh, his to his comrade to his uh, you know journey mate or to the listener to the reader of the poem that which one that solitary scotland or you know highland lass that yon means that solitary which is a repetition of the word in the in the title solitary highland girl last means last means girl highland what is highland here highland معناها مكان مرتفع بس هو يقصدون هنا المكان المرتفع اللي كان في سكوتلندا هو كان يمشي في سكوتلندا هو كان يتحرك في سكوتلندا يجول اقطار اوروبا معروف Wordsworth was a Roman كان جوال so while in one of his uh, you know journeys and roamings in Scotland Scotland what is Scotland any idea about Scotland it borders England from the north it's a cold what is she doing reaping and singing by herself she's reaping right she is reaping reaping the crop or you know harvesting the crops but in order not to make it a boring job she is singing all right who is she singing to no one yeah she's singing by herself 
She's not singing with anybody, she's singing by herself. She's not aware that the poet is listening to her. Why? Stop here or gently pass. The, the speaker, who is the poet, is asking someone passing by him. He says, stop here. He's asking his sister, by the way, Dorothy Wordsworth. So William is asking his sister to stop moving, to stop walking, stop here. Why? I wanted to look at that girl. I wanted to look at that lonely Scottish girl. What is she doing? She's weeping and singing alone. How many words, how many of the words, how many loneliness expressions are there? We got single, look at the word, single, we got solitary, we got by herself. No, there, are, there are repetitions of these words. Someone who is alone, 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 he likes to be alone. He likes lonely stuff and lonely, lonely, lonely people. So she's weeping and singing by herself. He's asking uh, his sister to stop here. Do not move. We don't want the solitary girl to take notice of us. To note that, or to know, to know that somebody is listening to her, or somebody is watching her. Please stop here and listen. Or if you want to move, let's pass gently. Let's pass quietly, so that the solitary reaper does not realize that somebody is nearby listening and watching uh, the poet i can safely say that the speaker is the poet ask his sister what's her name dorothy wordsworth to what to stop walking stop walking or gently uh, or gently walk why so that the solitary solitary solidarity the solitary reaper does not take notice does not take notice that there has been someone who is listening to her, who is listening or watching her. You know, some people are, particularly those uh, villagers, usually they are shy and coy. They don't want to be heard, right? They don't like to be singing in public or in front of others. Yeah. So if she takes notice of someone, she will stop singing. If she realizes that there's someone who's listening to her, she will feel shy and stop singing. Now, do you think the poet wants this to happen? No. He wants her to go on and on and on, singing and singing and singing. You following? Why? Something is captivating in the lady's song. In this lady's song, in this girl's song, there's something captivating, there's something touching. Alone, the single. Solitary, by herself, alone. And the kula kalimat for grounding something. What do, what do these foreground? What do they foreground? The theme. And the kalimat got it akid, what rakiz, what to kerr, nefsaha, likay, to what the fikra lazim nefala, and here, loneliness, and binds the grains. Takta, tahesh, and lua. And binds وتربط the grains. محاصيل إيش أخوات؟ محاصيل الحبوب. Grains. Give me examples of grains. Wheat, barley, sorghum. هذه كلها محاصيل حبوب. الذرة, الشعير, القمح. هذه كلها محاصيل إيش أخوات؟ Corn. Also corn. So these are all grain products.
grain crops. Is that clear? Who is cutting and binding? Who is cutting and binding the grains? It is the solitary reaper. And not only that, she is singing, but she sings a melancholy strain. That is, that is the arresting and touching and captivating part of the song. Melancholy. The song is sad. Melancholy means sad. The, the, the song is melancholy. Strain means song, right? Or poem, you know, lyric. The song of the poem is, you know, sounds like sad. She's not singing a joyful song. She's singing a very sad strain. Oh, listen. Speaker now is not in the process of listening. Now he's just tasting. He's relishing the song. He is tasting the song. He's cherishing the song. Oh, listen. For the veil profound. Now we've got an inversion over here. That's why I put a footnote in 53. Um, veil profound. Profound means deep. The deep valley. The deep valley. Here we have got an inversion. What do you call this? It's underlined. It means it's an inversion. In other words, we need to rearrange the order of the words so that they are syntactically read correct. Veil profound? Valley profound? No, it's not valley profound. It's supposed to be profound valley. Valley means hawadi. Valley means? Veil means valley. Profound veil in the huwa al wadi lamiq. Deep valley. So we have got an inversion. You know the meaning of inversion. Inversion means inversion means to disorder the words of a sentence. Syntactically, the order of the words are uh, uh, the order of the word is upside down. It's you know, it's not. It's incorrect. We don't say noun and then the the adjective. The adjective comes after the noun. We say profound valley. For the, for the profound valley is overflowing with the sound. Is overflowing with the sound. The speaker now is uh, now he is not in a stage of listening or hiding. He's now tasting the song. The melancholy song of the, of the solitary weeper. He says, oh, listen, wow, it's something like wonderful. Listen to this, you know, this melancholy song, this melodious song. What is he saying? Because, for here means because. Because the deep valley is overflowing with the sound. It's not only full with the sound, it's overflowing. The sound is... The, sorry, the valley is too much with, sorry, is so much with the sound of the, of the girl. The valley, the deep valley, is so much full with the melancholy song of the girl. So much that the song is overflowing. The valley, sorry, the valley is overflowing with the sound. It's not overflowing. Overflow, it's like, you know, uh, it's like pouring water on a piece of, uh, on a glass. To pour, you know, uh, let's explain the meaning of overflow. What is overflowing? Overflow means it's like, you know, f uh, pouring water on a glass until water starts to overflow. It's not, the glass is not only full, it overflows with water. صار الواحد لما يسكب ماء في في كأس والماء يتدفق يتدفق صار الكأس يمتلئ ثم إيش يفيض بماذا يا أخوات يفيض بالماء مش فقط يمتلئ بل أيضا يفيض. No nightingale did ever chant.
speaker here is making comparisons. No nightingale could ever sing more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady haunt among Arabian sand. The speaker here is making a comparison between the song of the solitary reaper and the songs of the beautiful bird we know as nightingale. Now, the say, he says, nightingales that sings beautifully, beautiful notes, welcome notes. The nightingales, the beautiful birds, nightingales, who sing welcoming notes, welcoming songs. For who? Who sing songs to weary bands of travelers. To very tired, weary means tired. Weary means tired. Bands, you know the meaning of bands here, it's not a musical band, but it's groups, caravans, qawafen, qawafen or majmu'at. The birds, nightingale, sing or chant, he, he says chant, but it, he means sings, out of the nightingale sings. He, he sings or it sings, it sings beautifully, beautifully welcome notes, welcome songs. To welcome who? يغني أغاني أو يغني أو يغرد singing here معنى يغرد ها تغاريد ترحب بها من weary bands قوافل متعبة القوافل المنهكة of what of travelers طيب وين مسافرين وين in some shady haunt in some shady haunt. What's a haunt? What's a haunt? It's an oasis. A haunt is an oasis. What's an oasis in Arabic? What's an oasis? Wah. You know, where is that? It's in Arabian sands. Arabian sand. So, usually, they would feel happy every time they come across a haunt. Every time they run into a haunt. An oasis. Oasis means what? Oasis means water, shade, rest, life. In other words, it's life. Oasis in the desert, and an oasis in a desert means life. Because it is a meeting point, not only for your caravan, for many caravans and groups of travelers across the desert. So usually, it's one of the most favorable places in the desert. What is it? The oasis. Here, he does not mean only the sand. He means a bigger picture, where sand is just a, a part of it. By Arabian sands, he means Arabian. What does he mean, sisters? Yeah. He means Arabian, sorry, Arabian desert. Usually, how would we receive a singing bird in these places? How would the travelers feel when they hear the singing nightingales in these, in that, you know, in this dislocated place of what we call oasis? How would you think the travelers would receive that or hear that singing nightingale. Huh? Would the travelers feel happy or sad? Happy. They would صوت عصافير الأندليب المغردة تستقبلهم في الواحة التي موجودة في منتصف الصحراء بعد قطع مئات وأميال من 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 الرمال الحارة عادة. المسافرين العرب وقافلات العرب طبعا هو بيتكلم هنا عن العرب يا خالد Arabians usually Arabs or the travelers would feel happy why? because nightingale is just like giving them the good tidings of life there is life in this place oasis means life do nightingales live in the desert? no so the singing of the nightingale for the travelers means 
that it's an aspect of life. It's a sign of life. You have reached to an oasis where you can take your breath, your rest, your food, your water, and your life. Because desert is death. When I say I am lost in the desert, I mean certain death. Well, I have found an oasis. Good. This is a sign of life. Because within an oasis, I can drink, I can wait for supplies, I can wait for a caravan to pass by, I can wait to buy a camel and continue walking and traveling. I can wait for a guide, a tour guide, or a desert guide. But when I'm lost in the, de in the desert, I will not find any of these things. I will just die of thirst. I will die of hunger. Or I will, or I will be eaten by the wild animals in the desert. Can we explain the comparison over here? Yes, we can write this in the footnote. بعد أن شرحنا السند كميتونومي نجي هنا عندكم كولن. طبعا هنا في كلام غير مكتمل. معناها معنا كلام غير مكتمل. يجب أن نكمل الكمبارسن. This is logic. Usually the travelers would be happier, right? Usually, you know, the, the travelers would reach a a station of life. عادة المسافرين في هذا السياق هم الأكثر فرحا لأنهم وصلوا إلى مصدر ماء مصدر حياة مصدر راحة مصدر تغيير أدوات يعني هناك كثير من الأشياء التي تعني الحياة في الواحد لكن بالنسبة للشاعر وش يقول نو no. هذا هنا لا يوجد نو no. No nightingale can sing a better song than the song of the solitary reaper. بالنسبة للشاعر, who is better singing? The nightingale or the solitary reaper? Who is singing better than the other? بالنسبة للشاعر, طبعا. طبعا بالنسبة للمسافرين, احنا نعتقد ان المسافر بيفرح اكثر. لكن بالنسبة للشاعر, who is singing a better song? The solitary reaper singing in the field or the nightingale singing to the travelers? For the speaker, for the poet, the solitary reaper is singing better. She's singing a very beautiful song that even nightingales cannot have, cannot sing when they sing to, you know, weary bands, weary travelers in the Arabian deserts. Who feels happier with the song? According to the speaker. Who is happier with the song? The speaker with the, with the, with the reaper's song or the travelers with the, nighting, with the nightingale song? According to the speaker. Who is happier? Who is happier with the song? وهو يستمع إلى الأغنية أو إلى ترانيم الأغنية المتكلم اللي هو الشاعر وهو يستمع إلى أغنية المزارعة المنعزلة المزارعة الوحدانية أم المسافرون الذين يستمعون إلى زغاريد وإلى عفوا إلى زقزقة عصافير النايت العندليب من يستمع أو من يشعر بالفرحة من يشعر بالسعادة أكثر بالنسبة للشاعر mm. the reaper the, the, the speaker or the traveler mm. the speaker that's right here that's the comparison that is the comparison where should I write here the comparison is number 60 all right number 60 the speaker is much happier and more arrested or touched, and I will touched, touched by the song of the solitary reaper, of the solitary, of the solitary reaper, than the travelers, the travelers, or the Arabian travelers, than the Arabian 
Arabian travelers or let's say tired خلينا نقول tired Arabian travelers in then uh, yeah, yeah so uh, the speaker is much happier and more touched by the song uh, by the, the song of the solitary reaper than the tired arabian travelers who listen to the welcoming welcoming songs of the nightingale the nightingale in an oasis nightingale who did better than the other the nightingale or the so the solitary reaper the answer is the solitary reaper did better الشاعر يرى انه هو اكثر بهجه وفرحه لاستماعه لتلك الاغنيه التي كانت تغنيها ايش يا اخوات مين المزارعة الوحدانية في قلب الوادي السحيق. A voice so thrilling near was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the sea among the farthest Hebrides. When no one tell me what she sings, perhaps the plaintive numbers flow. For old and happy far off things and battles long ago. Or is it some more humble lay, familiar matter of today, some natural sorrow, loss or pain that has been and may be again? What tear the theme the maiden sang, as if her song could have no ending. I saw her singing at her work and o'er the sickle bending. I listened motionless and still, and as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bore long after it was heard no more. This is the poem, sister. This is the uh, second half of the poem. In the second stanza, the poet goes to the second comparison. The poet comprises the second comparison. Between what? Between the touching, melancholy song of the solitary reaper and the other uh, songs, beautiful songs, of course, of beautiful birds. So he's, he's striking comparison. He compares the solitary reaper's song, sorry, he compares the solitary reaper to a nightingale. And he compares himself to weary travelers, to tired travelers, uh, traveling across the Arabian sand, across the Arabian desert. Well, this time, the second, the other four lines of the, of the second stanza, the poet is striking another example just to uh, prove just to uh, make it clear how much beautiful how much beautifully the solitary reaper was singing what's the second comparison about second comparison is about cuckoo bird it's a bird cuckoo bird you know, it's from the word, from the name itself, Kakubert. A voice so thrilling, the solitary reaper had a voice so exciting, so touching, so arresting. The solitary reaper, who has the voice of, who has got so thrilling voice? The speaker, the poet is speaking about, still describing the, the melancholy notes of the solitary reaper. He says, she has got a very thrilling voice. Thrilling means exciting, touching, very moving, huh? very uh, impressive, very impressive voice. Anybody who would hear her who would just stand still and listen to her. 
a voice so thrilling. The speaker is saying, I'm sitting, I'm standing, listening to the thrilling voice of what? Of who? Of the solitary reaper. Now, this is the second comparison system. You've got to understand this. We are moving into a new statement. Thrilling, near was heard. Who got, uh, uh, understandably, apparently there is a, a missing letter. It's supposed to be V, right? Never. But the speaker dropped the letter V and replaces it with an apostrophe. Why? The poet drops the letter V from the word never. Why? In order to keep the rhythmical, the rhythmical pattern, the rhythmical scheme, or the yeah, the rhythmical pattern. So the poet drops the letter V from the word never in order to keep the rhythmical pattern clear. Wow! Is it wow? ايش الريثميكال باترن؟ معنى ريثميكال باترن؟ ريثميكال باترن معناها النمط آه النمط التن... النمط الموسيقي للسطر، يعني احنا نسميه البحر الشعري للسطر. إذا جينا فوق ورأينا آه الكلمة. إي. A voice so thrilling near was heard. لو أبقى بالحرف V لو أبقى بالحرف V سنجد أنه الـ the rhythmical pattern is broken. A voice so thrilling never was heard. That's not the way of it. A voice so thrilling near was heard. The dum the dum the dum the dum triameter. This is triameter. يعني السطر مكون من three feet. لذلك لازم يسقط حرف عشان ما يزيد معه syllable. All right. A voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird. What's a cuckoo bird? A cuckoo bird um, uh, for the Scottish people. He's not. It's, he's in Scotland. The speaker is speaking in Scotland. So the, the because Scotland is in is north to England, the cuckoo birds are birds usually heard in the spring. Scotland is a cold country in the winter. It is a cold, it's a blistering cold country. بدأ الشاعر يتكلم عن طائر اسمه الكاكو بيرد. هذا الطائر يتواجد في جزر شمال اسكتلندا. جزر شمال اسكتلندا المتجمدة. Alright, you're following. And Whenever the people of these islands know, hear the voice of the or the sound of the cuckoo birds, the singing sounds of this of this bird, the people will automatically know that winter is over. Spring has already started. They have started into, you know, the the winter the winter is gone and they have turned into a new uh, a new season, which is. Spring. Now, do you think they are going to feel happy of the spring for the spring? Yes, they will be happy because you know it's spring. All right, spring. Ishmana spring yechwat. Rabi. Good. So in this season, the cuckoo birds breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest. We call it Hebrides. These are a group of islands. What are the Hebrides? If you go to footnote 63, a group of islands off the west coast of Scotland. Group, مجموعة من الجزر على الساحل أو تبعد عن الساحل الغربي لأي دولة يا أخوات أو لأي لأي منطقة لسكوتلندا دولة سكوتلندا هي دولة من ضمن دول الكومنيف. إذا هي مجموعة من الجزر إنما هي معروفة أنها جزر باردة usually. It's a they are called uh, islands normally covered with snow in the winter. So whenever they, the people of those islands hear the voice, voice, they are not voice, the sound of the cuckoo birds, they would just know that they have turned into the spring. 
Now, is the singing cuckoo-bird a welcome, welcomed by those people or not? Do they welcome? Do they feel happy to hear the singing voices of the cuckoo-birds in the Hebrides? So, the man Hebrides, a group of islands, a group of islands off the west coast, the west co coast of, um, of Scotland. So, among these islands, when they hear the sound, the singing sounds of the cuckoo bird, they will feel happy. They will feel elated. They will feel joyed because winter is over and spring has turned in. All right? You following? Is that clear? Just like when you hear the, uh, in, in your school time, when you hear the bell of the last class, what would you, what, how would you feel? Do you remember your school? You remember your school days? Yeah. When you hear when you hear the bell of the last class, seventh class, how do you feel? Relieved, right? You feel relieved. Hey, home, 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 right? Yes. You following? It's just like also when you hear the adhan of Maghrib in Ramadan. How would us? How would all of us feel? Happy, happy, happy. Why? Because it's time for yummy, yummy, yummy. Right? Right? It's the time for food. Ramadan, Maghrib prayer. So everyone, every Muslim, not everyone, every fasting Muslim would be so much joyed and elated because he's going to break his fasting day. His fasting day has come to an end, which is so much supremely welcomed by the fasting person. Exactly the point, the, the point is, is exactly pre, pretty much the same. The cuckoo birds being, singing in the, in the far, far off islands of the Hebrides, the people of these islands will feel very much elated, very much rejoicing, happy. I, I know, they reach to ecstasy. Of happiness because winter is over and spring is beginning right like in the no 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 they are not much happier than me they are not much rejoicing than me the people of those far off cold frozen islands are not much more happier than me they're much they're not much happier than me why because I I am more elated. I am more touched. I am more arrested by the song of the solitary reaper than they are when they hear the sound, the singing sounds of the birds called cuckoo bird. Where? Singing, breaking the silence. Look at the word. Breaking the silence of the seas. Texir. Texir Sant al Bihar. Why? Why are they silent? Because it was winter. In the winter, nobody goes sailing. People, particularly the fishermen, they don't go sailing out because it's frozen time. It's a frozen time of the year, frozen semester, frozen season of the year. So they don't go off. But when the birds are heard, well, you know, life. Is back to be warm, and that's why the people feel happy, right? Just like the the speaker who is listening to the singing sound of the solitary reaper. But the, the speaker he says, "No, I feel much more touched." The speaker is confirming the fact again. He thinks that the solitary reaper is singing. Far more thrilling. See, sir? A voice so thrilling. See that? So thrilling. Never was heard by the cuckoo bird. This thrill, that excitement can never be felt by the people of the Hebrides better and more than the speaker is feeling it. Comparison number two. Comparison. Comparison two. You've got to explain that, all right? Here, the speaker is saying what? The speaker or the poet is saying what? That the the song, 
The melancholy song. Melancholy song of the solitary reaper is far more thrilling and exciting. You can say thrilling, exciting, touching, all the same. Ex thrilling, touching, and touching, all right? And touching than the beautiful, the beautiful uh, songs of the cuckoo birds. Songs of the cuckoo bird that welcome the spring, the spring season on the or in the Hebrides. In the Hebrides. and finally, the solitary river excels out did the this uh, in uh, this uh, out did the cuckoo bird in thrilling. Songs in melancholy songs in touching songs. Will no one tell me what she sings? Speaker now speaking uh, is, is asking about the song, the lyric of the song, the content of the song. Will no one tell me what she sings? The speaker is asking, what is the solitary reaper singing about? Why? This, it's clear that the solitary reaper is singing in a strange language, in a foreign language to the listener, to the poet. The speaker is singing a, her melancholy song in a language that William Wordsworth did not understand. She was singing in a language that the, spe the, the speaker or the poet did not understand. So he had to start wondering. Will no one tell me what she sings? What is she singing about? What makes her singing so sadly? He is speculating. Will no one tell me what she sings? He's asking about the lyrics, the themes, the topics he's singing about. That's why the, 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 uh, the, stand, the theme of the stanza here is themes of the song. Now the speaker is giving or speculating now. Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow. Perhaps the plaintive numbers means the mournful sad song. Maybe the solitary reaper is singing a song for old unhappy far off things. Far off things. Maybe the solitary reaper is singing an old song, a traditional song, which is unhappy, but it could be about a theme which is far off things. It could be a theme which is about so much time back, so long time back issue. ممكن تكون الأغنية عن شيء ماضي جدا. مضى قديم all but unhappy and battles long ago it could be also about battles long ago now the first speculation أول تخمين speaker is guessing that the plaintive the, the, the sad song sad mournful song of uh, the solitary reaper could be about some uh, some uh, sad happenings that happened too long time back in history could be battles it could be an earthquake it could be whatever you know something that happened so long time but back so long so much time back in history إذن قد يكون الغناء عن شيء مضى ولكنها مصيبة مصيبة حصلت بالماضي or second speculation is it some more humble lay familiar matter of today it could be now he's uh, he is giving this in form of a question a very polite question is it some more 
humble lay. What is a lay? What is humble lay? Some humble, simple matter, simple issue. So the, the speaker could be thinking, singing about a, a, a domestic issue, a familiar issue, a social issue, a family issue. It should not be something national or something uh, that happened before, like war, like battle, like battlefield. It could be not that much grand problem that could take that could take the lives of so many people like in battlefield. Familiar matter of today. It could be something that everybody is familiar with. Maybe she does she is poor. Maybe her children are hungry. Maybe her husband has divorced her. Maybe her husband has died. Maybe um she, ha she could not manage the rentals of the house. Maybe we've got a lot of maybes around, all right? We have got a, let a lot of maybes around. So familiar, it could be something familiar that everybody is familiar with. The solitary reaper. Some natural sorrow, loss or pain. Now he is going to the natural disasters. First of all, national disaster. Second, personal disaster. Third, natural disaster. But بكون مصيبة طبيعية. Some natural sorrow, loss or pain. We should not forget, Wordsworth worship the nature. So he thought that the, the solitary reaper could be singing about somebody she has lost to an earthquake or a volcano. Earthquake. Zilzal. Volcano. Volcano. Have you heard of the Tornadoes. Esa. Any natural disaster that happens which makes the, the solitary reaper lose Somebody, some beloved person in her life, and now she's singing so much mournful notes to the death of that person. Clear? Is that clear? That has been and may be again. So, what are the level of the guessings, the level of speculations? Plenty of numbers, flow for all the hap yeah, for all the unhappy far off things. So he could be, yeah, he could be, she could be singing about what here? In here, she could be singing about something in the history, something in the history of the nation, right? History of the nation. She could be singing about a sad happening, a sad battlefield, something like battlefield. That happened in the history of the nation. Second, some yeah, humble lay, material, yeah, familiar matter of today. Here, he is speculating that the song could be about what? About personal, personal, huh? or domestic, or domestic. It could be personal, it could be domestic affairs, it could be personal, it could be domestic. Shmana personal or domestic? Personal means shaksi. Patakun al mushkila shaksi. Domestic. Patakun al mushkila aili. Family. Shay dahli. Lanu gal familia. Third level, some natural disaster. Some, yeah, the third level, al mustawa thalith. قد يكون إيش يا أخوات أو التخمين الثالث راح يكون إيش natural disaster. Give me examples of natural disasters. Volcano, earthquake, famine, drought. هذه كلها أمثلة. براكين, الزلازل, المجاعات, disaster. In which she loses a very daring, a very beloved person. All right, to which she loses stanzas. Number three is all about 
guessings. Guessings about what? Guessings about the themes of the song. The theme of the song of the solitary reaper. The song of of the solitary reaper. Is that clear? Continue? Okay, let's go to the last stanza, which is whatever the, whatever the theme the maiden sang. Whatever the theme the, the girl sang. Yeah, you know, he's not much concerned about the theme. Now, we've got a dropped letter. Can you see the apostrophe over here, sisters? Apostrophe. What is the missing letter? Do you know? Whatever. What's the missing letter? Again, it is. What is it? Whatever. We have got a missing letter. It is V, right? Whatever, it is V. But where is the V? Dropped. Why? The same purpose. It's the same purpose. The speaker has to drop a letter in order to keep or to maintain the rhythmical pattern of the poem. Where is that? Did we talk about this here? No. So whatever here, it's supposed to be whatever. But we have to read it like what year. What year the theme, whatever the theme. The speaker now is not concerned about the theme. He's not concerned about the lyrics of the poem. Like Tarith Al-An be Kalimat al Why? Because he is concluding his poem. Whatever the theme, we don't have to, 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 to be pretty much preoccupied about the theme of the song of the solitary reaper. The girl sang in a way as if her song could have no ending. The, the girl singing, the solitary reaper singing was, uh, was in such a way that it had no ending. Continuous. It made her, it, yeah, it makes her sound like singing forever. I saw her I saw her singing at her work. I saw her singing at, at her work. And over the sickle bending. It's supposed to be over. And the letter which has been dropped is V. And over the sickle bending. The speaker can see the solitary reaper singing at her work and bending over the sickle. I listened motionless and still I kept listening to him. I did not move. Motionless means without motion, without movement. Speaker deliberately did not move because he did not want her to take notice of him. So he, did, he just had to listen to her motionless. He did not produce a sound. He did not say a word. I listened motionless and still I just stood my place. I stood still. I never moved. And as I mounted up the hill, the speaker, later on, the speaker has to move on. He was listening to her, motionless and still. But now, the speaker has got miles to go before he sleeps. In other words, he has to move. Because he was a traveler. The speaker is a traveler. And as he was climbing up the hill, mounting up the hill, manner, climbing up the hill. وَبَيْنَمَا كَانَ يَعْنِي يَتَسَلَّقْ التَّلْ أو يتسلق الهضبة Following. And as he was mounting up the hill, the music still, he still bore the music in his heart. Long after the music was no more heard. Now, the music in my heart I bore, it's an inversion. Let's correct the inversion so that we, you know, understand. The music in my heart I bore. The subject is I. Bore. We, what did we say that this is what this was? This is called version. Sorry, inversion. 
ان فيرشن اللي هو تغيير مواضع الكلمات I bore again I bore the music in my in my heart this is the inversion I I bore the music in my heart this is the corrected Uh, the rearranged positions of the word. They are rearrangements of the sentence to rewrite the sentence. So he says, I bore. Bore is the past form of the verb bear. Hamiltu. I kept the music. Where? In my heart. Which music? The music of the solitary reaper. He can no longer hear her now singing. بعد ما طلع وصعد الهضبة أو التلال المجاورة للوادي بدأ صوت الصوتي ريفا بدأ صوت المزارعة التي تحصد المحصول بدأ صوتها يختفي the sound of the solitary reaper the voice the singing voice of the solitary reaper started to decline and decline until it completely vanished until he The speaker could no longer hear anything about, about the song. He could not hear the song anymore. But the music of that song, of that song is still bore in his heart. It's bore in his heart. He can it's still bear it in his heart. Mazalat musika tilka al-ghniya mahmoula fin in his heart. Long after it was heard no more. Even after the solitary reaper are no longer heard long after that the speaker still bears the music of that song this music of the solitary reaper song which is full of melancholy and mournfulness the music is still there in his heart so right after he finished listening and using his ears now his heart has started to take over and operate the song his heart is still listening to the music in his in his mind the speaker can no longer hear the, the 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 singing voice in his ears but he can hear it in his mind what is the theme of this part of the poem uh, this the recollecting powerful feelings in tranquility istijma aw tajmi' المشاعر الجياشة الفياضة لكن في لحظات الصفاء ولحظات النقاء. Okay. Um, I think I'll have to stop over here.